Welcome back to me. We're at Arches National Park right now. It's actually a pretty short park. It's about 20 miles long. It's an arch, there's an arch, and we're gonna go stand under that arch right there. We're gonna go stand under that arch right there. Get a picture with the kids. All national parks don't allow dogs, which is crazy. I get it. Maybe they should have like one arch accessible to animals. But anyways, we're gonna open up the RV and let our little doggy chill in there. He likes the RV more than the car. So I'll check up with you guys under the arch. Well, here we are, one of the arches. Pretty easy walk. Come check it out. Does look like that one's gonna fall soon. <laughs> right under the rock that could call fall and squish me. Smile. Pretty cool. Pretty scary. Perfect timing when nobody was there. Good morning. Last night after Arches, we decided to drive for an hour and a half or something like that. We ended up here at, can't remember, but I'll put it down on the screen, Swazi's Beach Campground. We weren't planning on staying here. We just decided to pull over for the night. But as you can see, pretty scenic. We didn't see anything until this morning because it's pitch black when we got here. It is a gloomy day, but it looks like the sun will come up over there. It's starting to look a bit blue, hopefully, because we're down to 62% battery. But just look at that shot. This is the same river, the Green River. I think it's called the Green River. That we slept on, except, you know, 800,000 feet higher. So far, Utah doesn't disappoint in scenery. Uh, Colorado as well. Uh, as I've said many times, it's a bit different uh, than Chicago. Chicago's got absolutely nothing to see. But anyways, I'm gonna take the kids for a walk. We're gonna get ready and then we're going to hit the road. something to consider when you come into the Bonneville salt flats is in winter it's a lake obviously it's not a billion degrees so all the water doesn't evaporate I mean it does look cool there's one area a rest stop going west where people actually get off and um, see the salt flats where it's dry so we're gonna try get there before the Sun goes down we are staying at a KOA tonight because not many nice spots out here guys so this morning we're at the salt flats whole bunch of cool footage that I'm sure I put in there for you guys today we needed to restock our food we've been on the road for a week and a half so we stopped at Salt Lake City got all new vegetables and all that fun stuff and then spoiled the kids with a happy meal <laughs> um, so that was good now the ultimate goal is to get to Bryce Canyon tomorrow we're trying to do it today but you know Sometimes you gotta run errands during a camping trip. So we are at Little Mills Campground, just right outside of Salt Lake City in a creek, in a canyon, I guess. 
The campground is closed, but there's a pavilion that's open, uh, which is nice spots, as you can see, right on the river. There's a road there, but it's not busy at all. So tonight I'm going to have a bonfire and with some of that bonfire wood, I'm going to grill up some steaks and we're going to organize all the food we bought. It's not an exciting day, but I mean, not exciting because we're used to so many epic things now. Uh, but we did see a ram climbing in the mountains. Uh, so hopefully we see something around here. Funny enough, there's a couple campgrounds around here that do not allow pets. Haven't really run into many of those, mainly because it's always off season and I go to places where most people don't want to go or boondocking or dispersed camping. But here's the nice little river. Our spot right there. Hopefully we see some wildlife. Have a nice bonfire and enjoy the peaceful night. Alrighty guys, well I'm leaving this light on on purpose because this is a pretty cool beanie I saw a couple years ago. It's got the light built into it. Um, it's just a battery pack on the back. But uh, check it out. If I can find it online I'll leave a link down below. But here's our setup for the night. Got my bonfire, the kids are inside. Uh, getting warmed up. They burned off some steam with their little razor scooters and so on. Got my bonfire going here and then I am getting my grill ready. I figured I'll bring a gas grill on the trips. I use it, I don't know, let's say 20% of the time, but it's always a, a cleanup job with gas. So I didn't feel like doing that. There's a grill right here. Let's uh, get some of my steaks going. So I'm getting that all ready for cooking. Hopefully in about 30 minutes that will all be burnt off and just nice coals there. And then I'm going to enjoy a nice steak. But for now I'm going to warm up by the fire. If you can see it's pretty cold. I don't know what it's going to get to tonight. But I'm sure down in the 30s or 20s. My bonfire is dying down. I got my steaks on the grill. I got my bear spray in my pocket hoping I get to eat these steaks before a bear gets to eat this steak. But anyways, guys, I'm officially going to let you go now because I need to finish up these steaks and go chow it down. Be sure to stick around, like, share, subscribe because there's plenty more coming. Good morning, good morning. It's a beautiful morning, but the problem with being in a canyon is no sun. But it was a chilly night last night. It got down to, I think, uh, 15. When I was grilling, it was actually 22 degrees. So I am going to start packing up and we're going to hit the road. Today is Bryce Canyon day. So we got about a 300 mile drive and we got to get going. Well, we are here at Bryce Canyon and there are dump stations are shut off. So that's pretty stupid. The campgrounds are open. The national park is open, but the dumb station's not. So we're gonna quickly look at the scenery and go boondocking. The only real reason to pay for a campsite in the winter is for amenities. If you need a plug-in or if there's no boondocking allowed or dispersed camping, or if you need a dump out. So to me, it's pretty pathetic that they have campsites open, but no dumping. Dumping, you don't need the flush out. You just need a place to dump. But anyways, enough ranting. I'm gonna go quickly see this. Also, where we are, you're not allowed campers, but I don't feel like walking 10 miles with kids. So, it's pretty empty today anyway. So we're gonna go risk it for the biscuit. All right, I'm pretty impressed. This is pretty cool. But I'm also more impressed that it's just this area. And there's three viewpoints here, there, and there. I was wondering why they were so close, because you're only looking over one canyon. Yeah, pretty pretty cool. But I've seen it <laughs> under the next. But yeah, you can see all the trails. There's trails down there. One day I'll come back and do the trails when my kids are older. This is Independence Outlook. Uh, we went to the first stop. And the second stop, there's a super high stop. 
We did not check that out. But it is looking cool. Now to go find a dispersed camping spot. I also can't get any drone footage because it's not allowed in these places. So, sorry about that. All right guys, well, my Bryce Canyon looks awesome, but all the facilities are actually closed. I mean, the bathroom is closed. The dump station's closed. To me, that's just stupid. They don't drop the price lower for this. Um, so anyways, fortunately some guy needed to pee there. So we just went around the building and peed, which means you'll probably get a hundred dollar ticket, but uh, you know, so stupid. Anyways, no more rants. Alrighty guys, well since uh, Bryce Canyon didn't have a dump, I figured there's no reason to pay to actually stay there tonight. Um, it is Thursday, so we decided to drive to Zion. Uh, looking at Zion, campsites are $130 a night inside the National Park, which is uh, ridiculous. So we found a dispersed location close to Zion where we will be keeping the trailer for a day or two. I'm unhooking the car now so we can go check out Zion tomorrow before the weekend crowds get there. But uh, I can't show you much now. There's a full moon up there along with all my glorious lights that help me unhooking everything. But I will check in with you guys in the morning, show you the location and hopefully some cool things at Zion. Well guys, wasn't that episode jam-packed with some great footage? A couple things I want to address from this episode, and that is the solar system I have on my camper. So I've addressed this before on what I've modified on my camper. There's a link down below if you want to see that. But just to sum it up, I have 760 watts of solar on the roof, and then I have four 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries to run everything inside of my camper. I do not travel with the generator. The only way I can get charged is either through the sun going to RV park to hook up and then the best way I think instead of going to RV park is I've connected a cable from my battery in my SUV goes directly to my batteries in my camper so it can charge when we're driving on those gloomy days now before we discuss solar let me discuss the way I travel which is pretty crazy I travel to a new place basically every night and the reason for that is because I want to see most of America as I can that way later on in my life I can say, oh, I want to go back to Moab, or I want to go back to Lake City in uh, Colorado, and then spend an extended period of time at one location. I'm trying to get a good understanding of what America has to offer before I commit to a week or two week trip at one location that I've never been to before. So I move constantly every night. Another thing that I've done in my 22,000 miles of traveling around America is I've never made a reservation once at a campground. If I do make a reservation, it is five or 10 or an hour before I get to that location, just so I know I have a spot that I'm going to. For example, a KOA because I can't find a boondocking location, but I never plan ahead. The only thing I plan ahead is specific locations I want to visit, or specific locations I can boondock at. Now, if any of that sounds like something you might want to do, or if you don't want to make reservations and you're going on a long trip and maybe there's three or four days to get there, RV solar might be a good setup for you. Now, yes, it is expensive. My RV solar panels and inverter were about $4,000. And then my battery system again was about $4,000. So I would say if you're looking at the similar setup that I have, it's about $8,000 plus you install it. I would say maybe 10 to 12,000 if someone else installs it. Yes, that's a lot of money. It's a ton of money. Keep in mind, I believe it does get me to these epic places and I don't have to park next to people at an RV park that I can actually hear their TV. And that's the whole point of me getting in this camper and driving around America. I don't need to listen to someone else's business. I wanna enjoy the outdoors and experience everything. And that's the reason I've got this camper. And that's the reason I've made it off grid. Now, I don't believe you have to go extreme with the amount of panels I have or the amount of batteries I have. I only have that amount is because I camp off season, which means there's less sun in the sky to charge my batteries. And also with the sun down, you're inside the camper a lot more. 
So that means you need more batteries to run the TV, the microwave, and so on. As mentioned before in this series, I never get low on my batteries. I've never been lower than 50% on my batteries. So I've also over planned my solar system, but that's also saving for one of those actual rainy days where I cannot get some charge. But I'll tell you one thing right now. If you are looking for adventure and you're looking to see places that many people don't see in their life, you're going to want some sort of RV solar. Winnebago now offers the FLX, which includes a lithium batteries and a solar system that will get you through a couple days, no problem. So I'd highly recommend you check that out. Link is down below. But if you already have a camper, no worries. I already have a video about RV Solar Simplified. Keep in mind guys, I've never been in an RV before I bought my RV. I've never traveled America in an RV. I've only lived my life on plane. So when I got my RV, I knew absolutely nothing about RVing. And with me, I dive headfirst into everything. So I modified this. I have over 100 hours of modifying this camper. I learned how to do solar on YouTube and by myself. So it is all possible. Don't think it's overwhelming. It just may take some time. One thing I know for sure is my solar system got me to the places that I actually wanted to go visit. I don't want to spend time in a KOA. Sometimes I do because it's easier that night or I need to replenish my supplies. But most of the time I'm looking at places that have no people, nothing around and no cell phone service, which normally means there's no power, there's no water and there's no help. So be sure you watch this whole series because if that interests you and that's what you're looking for, that's what this whole series is here for, helping you figure out how to get to the places I get to. Now guys, if you're looking to learn more about this, I have a bunch more videos coming out, so be sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. 90% of you guys watching my content are not subscribed to my channel. So in order not to miss out, hit that subscribe button. But guys, that's going to do it for today. Thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you next time.